How's it going everyone? Shoops here back in video. Today we're going to be reviewing The Great Disruption by Paul Gilding. Why the climate crisis will bring on the end of shopping and the birth of a new world. So, big title there. Um, I'm going to get into the review slash discussion. I'm going to be, you know, give his point, then I'm going to give my take on it, what I think about it. By the end of the video, hopefully you know if you want to pick up this book. If you do, I'm going to have a link in the description, or if you feel like you've already got enough information through this video. So basically, the main point is that our current economic belief is that there will be infinite growth, but our planet is finite, and so eventually growth is going to come to an end. Now, that's what he thinks. Um, I don't totally agree with that. We'll get into that in a second. But what I do agree with completely is that it doesn't even matter anymore if you care about saving a species, if you care about saving this or that. It's really straight up like an economic point at this point, uh, what the damage we're doing and what it's going to cost us, it doesn't make sense anymore. It really doesn't, and that's the stupid part about it. So this book was written in 2000, I think, 11, and um, I think, or I could be wrong, I think he was a little bit earlier, but I, th I was thinking just about the author, and uh, I think he would have been surprised by the lack of change that we've done already in recent time. Because you think we would be already more on this. Yeah, 2011, I was right. Uh, because it really doesn't make sense anymore. The output of our economy, all these cheap crap and consumerism that we don't even need, we don't even use really, a lot of stuff we throw away, we're fronting the cost of the future. Every time we're making plastic stuff that isn't being recycled, we're fronting the cost of the future because we we act like we can just ignore it. But it really is, it's still there. It's still building. And the problems are still growing. And we're continually fronting that cost of the future. And ecosystems are also very productive systems. People don't understand that. People don't understand that you humans can't recreate an ecosystem as well as nature can. Because they're so complex. If you would just preserve more fish, for example, it would be more effective than creating a fish farm. Because then you create a fish farm. Then you need the feed for the fish. You need to get that. Then you need to raise that on your own too. And the costs are so huge in doing stuff like that. It's not worth it. It would be more worth it to conserve and use. Like the coral reefs. People don't understand. That's like how many jobs that creates. How many tourism jobs. How much that supports the local economy. And when it dies off, you're killing jobs. This isn't even about killing the coral reef. If you don't, want to, if you don't care enough about the coral reef, it's an economic problem that we're going to face. And it's a very scary thing, I think, because we're not accounting for the cost of what we're doing anymore. I mean, some companies are being rewarded by changing public sentiment. I personally try to support a green company if I can, if I find an alternative, and I support anyone who does that. It's always a good decision. Um, it's important to remember, as consumers, we are very powerful. If we unite, and as a force, we can really make a difference. And I think we're going to see that. I think we already see concepts like basic minimalism, buying less, shopping less, doing more experience, spending more time with people, growing as we realize and many people realize that just being alone, you know, being focused on material goods all the time isn't healthy either. And it's not going to lead you to happiness. So I think he's right about some of these things that are growing. Some of those things were starting to get some momentum, but I feel like 2018, we are seeing like, big talk about minimalism and, you know, consuming less, retiring early, and these type of movements. And he says in the book, consumerism is the new opiate of the masses. I really agree with that. I mean, it's, it's so, it's pretty ridiculous how much is being produced. And we like to ignore all the problems that it does cause too, with all the cheap stuff. So I think Currently, I can really see what he's talking about, this great disruption, because if companies aren't adapting, and some companies are smart and they are adapting, but when it comes down to it, uh, as he says, we're going to need basically a war mobilization. His favorite thing to compare it to is World War II, and because we're going to need massive change, and it's going to need the public support, and that's why I'm making this video, that's why I want to make videos, getting people more aware, because we do need public support about environmental issues at some point. It's going to be in, intolerable. That it is going to need to require immediate change, and the government's not going to 
be afraid to punish companies that have not changed in the past. And all of a sudden, a lot of old companies are not going to do so well. So I think that is what the great disruption is going to be. But I still personally see economic growth potential and, you know, increased technology, better technology. And I feel like the end of growth isn't going to happen. Basically, I think one of the main arguments for continuing growth is that there's going to be better technology. Now, what I do see is what he's saying is basically we need to stop carbon output. And we're not we're going to have a period where that technology isn't going to be there. So I think there could be potential stagnation in the economy as a whole. You could probably still um, make money, I think, putting money into green companies, which is what I'm planning to do eventually. I, I want to put money into green companies and renewable energy because those are the ones that are going to see huge growth. Uh, but for as a whole, the economy might not move so well for a while because we're going to need the technology to, to, to catch up. And there's not enough investment put in that right now. So it's so hard because he also talks about us needing to come to a crisis before we come to action. I, I agree with that too. That's something I thought before I read this book. I kind of had some, some similar ideas before I was reading this book. Basically, people never react until something huge happens like Pearl Harbor. And then we're all in. Um, he talks about the economy increasing from a 1% of GDP to 36, I'm sorry, military spending of 1% to 36 in like four years during World War II. And I don't even think we need such mass mobilization as a world war. It'll just be requiring uh, a lot of regulation and people will be for it because they're not going to tolerate it anymore. That's the other thing too. It, it's not only the cost of tourism or jobs in that sense too. At some point, areas of the world that do not have the resources are not in a good place for climate warming are going to be screwed and there's going to be mass migration. Do you think migration is a problem now? Well, wait 20 years if we don't do anything. It's going to be a terrible problem. Wait 50 years. The problem is people don't understand the slow and exponential. People don't understand exponential things and how quickly those things change. And that is why we're going to need to see a crisis. Now, we don't know where that turning point is going to be, but eventually there's going to be a crisis and there's going to be a mass public awareness. Now, that doesn't mean it's pointless now to keep talking and to keep the conversation going. It just means that we can't expect it right now. I Hopefully, by making videos like this, more people are thinking about it and more people have it on their mind and are more ready to adapt and to take on a new mentality. I truly believe we're going to have to change so many things all of consumerism is going to change, and I think people are already slowing down. They're spending. Uh, we see big box retailers failing. Now, that's all switching online, so I can't say everyone's doing it, but there is definitely a group of the population who is now being uh, more environmentally concerned, and I hope that group continues to grow. And anybody who opposes that, honestly, it's going to have to change. It It's not physically... It goes against the laws. It goes against how an ecosystem works. And we think we're so big and so important that we're beyond an ecosystem, but we're still part of the earth. And I think it's partially because people think, oh, God put us here. So are a part of that mentality where it's like, uh, there's no way we're so important. We could be making such huge impacts in, in a weird way. But it really is true. I mean, we're we're so many people. We make such a large impact. All of us require so many resources. And the only other thing I see is potentially the stagnation of the economy is when things switch to a local-based economy because we're going to need a lot more local production and stuff like that. So I'm thinking potentially a lot of growth will still come from things that are needed all over the country, like a technology and that's where I think a lot of growth is going to come from. But, for example, food growth and stuff, like we're going to see need to see more locally. And big companies that are exporting and importing foods across countries are not going to do so well in the future. Now, I don't know how quickly it's going to come up. Currently, a lot of the country is still ignoring it. But we have seen even, I think Mitch McConnell even said he thinks, uh, he agrees that climate change is, is happening now, finally. So I think we're seeing a slow change of public sentiment. I think it's going to ramp up. And I really hope within the next five years we do make major changes because if not, it's just becoming more and more difficult to reverse what we've done. And again, I believe economically it doesn't, it doesn't even make sense anymore uh, to continue what we're doing. The cost of short-term growth, uh, we're ignoring 
what's going to happen in the future. So a little bit scary to think about um, because, well, it is going to be a great disruption. The economy is going to be disrupted. I truly believe that. I don't know if it's end of growth, like I said, but major change is coming. A major cultural change is going to come too. I really believe those things. And hopefully working together um, and spreading more thought about these topics we can continue the discussion. So I just realized how long I've been talking for and rambling for. I hopefully you guys you enjoy my perspective on it and enjoy the book reviews. I'll be doing more in the future. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.